continue our studies of Ezekiel chapters 38 and 42. Prophecy against Gog, reading from verse Chapter 38, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Continuing from verse 14. Oh, therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, Thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel dwell us safely, shalt thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken, surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishers of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth, and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him, and upon his bands, and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain, and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself, and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, this is not a prophecy study, but I know many try to predict and identify who is the beast of revelations who will attack Israel and when. You may wish to compare the above with Revelation chapters 20 verses 7 to 9. Now I do not speculate, but you may wish to note the mention of Gog bringing an enemy, Gog, sorry, bringing an enemy, which is Gog, against Israel so that he can exercise his wrath against them and all nations know that he, the God of Israel, Yahweh, is the real God. Just like with Pharaoh in Exodus, we God said, Exodus chapter 9 verse 14, For I will at this time send my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will... Stretch out my hand that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in every deed for this cause have I raised thee up to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. So remember some of the former times we God fought for Israel when it looked like they would be overwhelmed. Judges chapter 7 verse 22. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, this is uh, Gideon, and Yahweh set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host, and the host fled to Bethshita and Jerata, and to the border of Abimelola, unto Tabith. First Samuel, chapters 14-20. And Saul and all the people that were with him assembled themselves, and they came to the battle. And behold, Every man's sword was against his fellow, and there was a great, and there was a very great discomfort. Second Kings nineteen verse thirty-five, and it came to pass that night that the angel of Yahweh went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred, fourscore and five thousand, and when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. And the last example, Isaiah chapter thirty-seven verse thirty-six. Then the angel of Yahweh went forth and smote in the camp of the Syrians a hundred and fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were dead corpses. So we continue from Ezekiel chapter 39, reading from verse 1. 39. 
Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel, and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Verse 7. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name any more, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Verse 12. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them, that they may cleanse the land. So God continues to say what he will do to them, and I'm going to take the story from verses 21 to 24, or, or further on. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them, and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. According to their uncleanness, and according to their transgressions, have I done unto them, and hid my face from them. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and will be jealous for my holy name. After that they have borne their shame, and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwelt safely in their land, and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people, and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and am sanctified in them and the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land, and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them. For I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. <coughs> and on to chapter 14, the vision of the new temple, reading from verses, chapter 40, verses 1 to 4. Chapter 40. In the five and twentieth year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, on the tenth day of the month, in the fourteenth year, after that the city was smitten, in the selfsame day the hand of the Lord was upon me, and brought me thither. In the visions of God brought he me into the land of Israel, and set me upon a very high mountain, by which was as the frame of a city on the south. And he brought me thither, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass, with a line of flax in his hand, and a measuring reed, and he stood in the gate. And the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears, and set thine heart upon all that I shall shew thee. For to the intent that I might shew them unto thee art thou brought hither, declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. What follows up to and including chapter 42 is a description of the temple. Some say it will be the third temple to, build in, to be built in Jerusalem in the future. The palm trees mentioned are carvings, not pictures. God does not have any pictures on the walls of his temple, like the Catholic churches have um, stations of the cross and other things like that. Shalom, until tomorrow, happy studies, God willing.